everyone. Um, sorry, we are a little late. My name is Bina Bendale, and thank you for coming to this Entrepreneurial Talk show. Today, I'm so honored. Me and Nina actually did a summit together, and she's doing some amazing stuff that I want everyone to hear and to share and to be able to utilize. Nina, can you tell me a little bit? Who are you? What do you do? And why do you say yes to me? <laughs> Absolutely. My name is Nina Hart. I am an RN. I have a PhD in natural medicine and a bunch of alphabet soup after my name, functional medicine uh, nurse specialist and certified hospice and palliative nurse and director of nursing and association. I've done a whole lot of things. I started as a CNA in long-term care and worked my way up to DON and then um, hospice and got my dream job as a CEO. They fired me for no reason five weeks later, and we were stuck in Hawaii with no job and no money. As a CEO of a company. Correct. And this was a hospice? Yep. A large hospice in Hawaii. They let me go and they didn't really give me a reason, just said it wasn't a good fit and good luck. I thought there was this implied promise that they were going to employ me and my family was going to be okay. And we had this huge house we rented because of my cushy CEO salary and my dream job. And we were screwed. So that is how I started working for myself. It completely destroyed my trust in the employment system. Now I am the self-employed nurse. And four years later, I'm working for myself as a consultant. I do hospice compliance and education consulting. I help nurses who want to start consulting as well. I coach nurses on business startup and I use a lot of my content as passive income streams. So digital downloads, manuals, PDFs, education, and sell those separately. I love passive mm -hmm. income. And I just added some functional coaching. It's my alphabet soup. I gave the hint that I'm into natural medicine. And so I've had a lot of interest in that. And I'm working with a chiropractor locally to be based out of his office a few days a week. So I've got a lot of irons in the fire. I'm doing a lot. And I have three great service lines that keep me busy and keep me interested. Very impressive. But do you mind if we talk about how it felt to go back, if you don't mind? Nope. I would love to talk. I talk okay. about it all the time. This is my favorite topic. I think I want people to really understand where sometimes an entrepreneurial brain comes from. A lot of the times, I think people forget that hospitals are corporations. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are like, I'm not in a lot of nurses out there. They're like, we're yeah. not in corporate. I said, uh -huh. yes, you are. Yeah. You know, you are. Yes, you are. The hospital is the number one corporations in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, And the false promise behind it. And I see this a lot <laughs> is the false promises that people get in bedside or the stigma behind it. You went from bedside to CEO level, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But I'm also even talking like the subcategories of being a bedside to who's going to be the charge nurse, educator to management. What I've learned at bedside is that as a list, it is like another corporation world. A lot of people don't feel this. So if you guys trigger points for everybody, this might piss you off. Let's be yeah. honest. So with that being said, people's expectations versus reality is really big. I have been bedside for X amount of years and you're going to be the next one to be charged nurse. But this new person comes in who's qualified, who's understanding, gets the position. It's those expectations versus reality. I was expecting to be the nurse educator because I have the alphabet suit behind my name, right? Which I want to talk about real quick, uh, r shortly after this, because I honor alphabet soups. I highly honor it. Absolutely. It comes in people who are transitioning from hospitals to being entrepreneurs. I tell people, if you're losing an identity and I'm contradicting myself, because initially I said, if you are letting it go, which is a choice, people have the alphabet soup and it's a choice for letting go or not. Yeah. But now after I had a deep spiritual type of thing that I went through, it's like, yeah. but why are we giving those letters up? Mm -hmm. well, I had this mindset. I had this belief system that I had always done well in my job. I had worked my way up from... CNA, and I got my LPN, then I got my RN, then I got my BSN, then I got my MSN. I worked my way up from an administrator to an area vice president, to a national manager, to a CEO. Wow. I had worked really hard for this. And then I had a kid in between each one. So I did this real fun thing where I should probably be a doctor by now. But I believed that the harder I performed in my job, 
the more recognition I got, that was how I defined success. Mm. It didn't matter if I was a good wife. It didn't matter if I was a good mom. It didn't matter if I was happy. What mattered was I performed, I showed up, I did all the things. I was number one in the company. And then I'm like, yes, what's next? What's next? I hit this level. What now? What next? This is how I got my feels, how I define myself as worthy and successful. And then when they fired me, there was no recourse. They didn't give me any severance. They wouldn't give me one month of severance without a two-year non-compete. This is my specialty area. I'm not going to sign a two-year non-compete for a one month of severance pay. So I walked away without a dime, no income at all, nothing. They paid me $250,000 a year plus $50,000 of relocation and a $50,000 bonus for that job. And I walked away penniless and in huge debt. From moving my family over there and getting this big, beautiful beach mansion on Lanikai Beach in Hawaii because I was successful and I had finally done it, right? Lost, literally had never been fired from a job in my life. Had never even been written up. This was the most devastating thing. This was the worst thing that had ever happened to me was losing this job. And the shame of driving home to tell my husband that I was fired. He's going to promote you because I knew I was going into this meeting and he's going to promote you, Nina. And I'm like, Jed, I know what promotion feels like and this ain't it. He's like, they're going to put you as president of the board. They're going to make you a part of, no, I know what that feels like. And this is not that vibe, right? So I walked away from that, just like crying out to God, like, what am I supposed to do now? I I was just totally lost. I had no direction, no motivation. I didn't want another job. The employment system now is something I can't trust. I believed you were going to honor our agreement and give me a paycheck. And you gave me two paychecks and let me go on my own. And now I have nothing and I did nothing wrong. So it's like this, this just shattered my whole belief system about what success meant and what working hard in that performance mindset meant. And that's a good thing I want people to hear. And this is why I'm so happy you're on my podcast, uh, on this talk show right now is because sometimes nurses in general, we go after the alphabet soup and there's nothing wrong with that. It it shows authority and you work damn hard for that. Let's be real. That is no joke. When I got my CEN, my CCRN, that was no joke. I was studying hours and hours. Those exams sucked. But when I left ER, and I started losing CNL, then I lost CCRN, then I lost CEN, then I lost a lot of my other letters because I was doing the same thing. I was on that path of, I want to be this best because if I have all these letters, I'm successful, right? People will take me seriously then. If people I'm a CEO, take- people right. will listen to me and exactly. know what exactly. I can do. I love my ADN nurses. I love you all out there really hard. I'm, I'm a big supporter for every single one of you. I'm doing ADN nurse. You're great at bedside. But it's that lack of, oh, I can't move up because I'm just this and I don't have this degree. I call bullshit. It's like putting people in a box. And in nursing, we do this to each other. To ourselves, we're so tied to our identity. Even now, some people come up to me and they go, Bina, what do you do? I'm an ER nurse. I'm my own boss. We've worked so hard to get to that level. And people realize that we went... From possibly high school, being wanting to be a nurse, some of us. I knew I wanted to be a nurse ever since I was a little kid. Then we go through college. Then now nursing school is insane to get into. So now we're going into debt, working triple jobs, whatever we need to do to become a nurse. By the time we get to being a nurse, we take our boards. The board sucked. And so it builds your identity of, damn, I did heart, but sweat to be where I'm at now. I'm there. And then we go into the hospital settings or a setting that comes up. Some of us move progressively very fast like you did, which congratulations, by the way. I want to acknowledge the fact you're a badass CEO. You are a badass CEO. And then they strip it. And then it's just gone. Right? If you get fired, if you let it go, I quit three years ago on Labor Day, which is coming up on Monday. Happy anniversary. And I'm proud of it. And maybe two years, three years. I don't know. See, it's been so fucking long. And it's that loss of identity that comes in. But I think it's one thing that me and you have in common is that one loss of identity. I chose to quit because I was like, fuck this, I'm done. 
you didn't have the choice. I hated it. The first five weeks, I was miserable. I couldn't tell my husband. We just committed to this. I hated that job. And you know what? I'd have stayed there forever. I'd have never let that go. The title, the money, this, the opportunity. I would have held on to that as long as possible, even though I hated it, because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. Do you know how many times I hear nurses say this? I have to stay at my job because this is my duty. This comes up again. I want to make it very clear. I We are not derailing any nurse that is at bedside to leave their job. We encourage it. Stay where you are if it makes you happy and comes up. We've been there. I've been a bedside nurse for 18 years. What we're saying is that if you have a higher calling and that intuition of maybe there's something more here, that's the ones that we're talking to. So I want to make that clear distinction right now so we don't get kicked off Facebook. Because <laughs> me and you have gotten kicked off Facebook plenty of times, I think. That means some trouble We've both recently. gotten into some real big troubles with Facebook. Hot water. <laughs> So I want to make it very clear. We are not doing that. All we're doing is stating our story and we're giving advice to people who want to hear it and you can take it as it is. I just have to state that for clinical and community standards. Okay. Uh, you know, now we are. Okay. okay. So what would you tell talking about loss of identity? I think that's a big one to talk about in general. How did you overcome that? I think the biggest battle is that loss of identity. I want people to realize it's an old identity and you're transitioning to a new identity. I love the way you put this because I had to let go of some really bad beliefs I had held on to for my entire life. This is not overnight. I had dreamed about working for myself. I wanted to be a consultant for 10 years. When mm -hmm. I was a director of nursing, here in Tennessee, before we moved to Hawaii, before any of that, I was like, I want to open a CNA school. And then what happened was my identity as an employee, where I got that very safe paycheck and I'm the breadwinner and my husband's a stay-at-home dad because I'm a DON, I'm on call 24-7, kicked in and said, what if you don't get any students? How will you pay the rent? Mm -hmm. What if no one signs up? What if you can't run a school? As soon as the what ifs came and the how came in, how are you going to make this work? I backed out and I was like, nope, can't do it. Oh, can't do can't it. Do can't it. do not, this. Not, not sure. Not safe. So I would quit. I would back out and quit because I couldn't answer the questions. I was a little bit of like imposter syndrome, a little bit of that identity as an employee and a little bit of just fear and lack thinking, like my bad beliefs. But when I got fired, I realized I've been believing things about situations that aren't true. And I've been putting those situations before my family, before myself and my own needs. I have been neglecting my own needs for safety and identity because I wanted to believe that things were different. I believed that if I showed up and did a good job, I would get rewarded and recognized. And whether that was true or not, that's my belief, right? I also believed that I couldn't work for myself because I wouldn't make enough money. That was also not true. Being fired forced me to change that identity, change those bad thoughts. So being fired, I had to take those beliefs and bury them. Something died in me that day and I buried that person and moved on with my life. And it was very freeing in a lot of ways, but I still deal with the identity. I have not received miraculous healing of that experience or of the performance mindset that I default to when I'm stressed out, that I have to show up this certain way or I can't be accepted and have to present this certain way. All these things are things that I deal with every day. And I don't think there's like a quick fix for those other than doing that work in yourself and like staying in the right mindset and surrounding yourself with the right people and yeah. doing the things that are all very like standard, nothing, no overnight success story here. You mentioned something very key. When our inner circle is questioning us, it, it's a huge factor in entre. When we have these decisions and we're going from an, an old identity to a new identity, we have to remind ourselves that we, and I, again, husbands, spouses, things is a huge factor in that particular equation. In those moments, we have to have those hard conversations. I know this is a trigger for you. I know you're uncomfortable, but can we not say 
this won't happen, that won't happen, because then we're going to believe it. And then it's exactly what you do. I know so many nurses right now, they're like, Bina, we want to do your program, but I got to go talk to my husband about it. Go talk to your husband. Great. And then they're like, wow, $6,000, blah, blah, blah. But you spent so much money on nursing school to get to where you are. Invest in yourself in the program that you know you're going to get real results from. I'm not guaranteeing anyone a job, but mm -hmm. I can't guarantee the clarity, the program creations, the journey behind it. Yeah. And it's like, when somebody else starts doubting you, then yeah, that doubt, that insecurity, those things are going to come back. I'm very blessed that my husband, when I was at bedside, we were part-time and he's been a go per diem because he did have the Facebook job. Same thing. He's get the Facebook job, comes in. I kid you guys not. I went and I quit. This is when my personal business started taking off and I decided I chose to quit a week, like what, Monday, three years. A month later, my husband got laid off. And now we're like, oh shit. Luckily, we stared at each other. And the only thing I can say that me and my husband has that real heart to heart conversation. He said, what do we do? I said, nothing. I can go back to bedside. I work my ass up in the business. Are you able to take the grunt of what we need to do? like home wise things I can support. What can I do to support you, Bina? Kid you not two months in a row, hundred K hundred K months came right out. Wow. Made an That's income. With, I made a full blown income. That is amazing. No, because it's what you said yeah. when we're going through an identity crisis, right? If we have people in the back that says, maybe no one will come. Maybe no one will pay you. What happens if your business doesn't come in? What happens, how are you going to get clients? And in my head, I'm like, I don't know how I'm getting clients, but I know I'm going to get them. I don't know, how, but they're going to come. The and craziest thing is we can be our own worst enemy. My husband wasn't the one saying, how are we going to do it? I so, was. He works full time with me now in my business. He's my biggest supporter. But in my head, I thought I didn't even tell him about my business that I was working on these passive products because I thought... He's going to think this is a waste of time. He's going to think this is stupid. No one's going to buy this. And this is me talking. This is my own personal talk in my wow. own head. This was time. my personal thoughts initially until I was less like I was in a situation where we both were like, I'm yeah. fine. I'm coming in. Yeah. Yeah. How are we going to pay my more? We're like, there's nothing to lose now. <laughs> Make it or break it. By the time I got fired and finally got over myself and out of my bad mindset, I took that little course that I thought no one would buy and I put it in a folder and I said, I'm going to give this to DONs for $27 and I put it out there and say, Hey, these are all my little audits and all the forms I made as a DON. And if it helps you, it should save you a lot of time. When I, it was on Memorial day weekend in 2021, I went to sleep on Friday. When I woke up on Monday, there was $3,000 in the bank and I had sold over a hundred of those little folders with documents in it. I was like, there's I'm something to this $3,000 yeah. in three days. This is something here. I had to be forced into the position where I wasn't afraid to share it anymore. I wasn't afraid what people were going to think or afraid to put myself out there. I think we give people way too much power over our lives. Like, who cares? <laughs> if it's what you want, it, I, I'm in a really good place right now where I'm like, this is what I'm doing. If you don't like it, that's okay. Give us some space. <laughs> Keep on moving. This is you what know, I, I had a conversation, actually, it was about deep listening. And one of the things I told people is remove their title. Remove the title of who it is. A mom is a title. A husband is a title. A CEO is a title. If you remove all that and just have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation and actually listen, it doesn't matter what we're doing. At the end of the day, you are a badass CEO. Congratulations. You're still a badass CEO. You are still a badass CEO. And it's still like the most inspiring people I always say are the ones that don't look for that identity. I don't go around saying, hi, I'm the CEO. Da, da, da. People ask me and I wait, what is it that you do? But I'm more curious about other people. You are more curious about other people because we both were curious about each other in the beginning. Yeah. Because the most inspirational people are the ones that listen, the ones that come in. That doesn't care if you're the CEO or the president or this or that, because it goes back to that heart-centered conversations.
So how do you teach other entrepreneurs? Ha ha, said it correctly. How do you like help other entrepreneurs, nurses come in, shift to that mindset? Because you also went from that loss, right? To now you're still the CEO, but now you're just a C in your own world. How do you trend help people transition? I love to challenge bad thinking patterns. I love to possibility thinking is and ideas like brainstorming is probably my favorite, gives me the most energy. And just, I got to go to the NNBA conference in July. My husband got to go with me. My sister got to go with me, my power team. And I had all these nurses coming up to my table saying, what do you do? You could work with tech companies to promote this as a service. You could serve with them. You could partner with them. I'm partnered with the hospice EMR. We do this. I help them with compliance. They help me with documentation, all these opportunities that are out there just because you don't know about it or because you haven't done it yet. They're like, oh, I want to do this, but I can't. And it's maybe you can't do it that way, but there's about a thousand different options that will work that people are making money off of that. I love to challenge that thinking I have this idea, but it won't work. It's not that way or that thought process. If you don't put any time into it, or not if you just yeah. look at the internet and have a thousand tabs open, draining yourself, you actually have to go do it and show up. You actually have to show up. That's the scariest part for me, showing up. Sometimes I still feel like, oh, I don't want to do this when I have to show up. I had a CE training and I for some reason, just had that, oh, I have to show up and talk about this topic. Am I really still a hospice nurse? I haven't worked in hospice for five years and I got fired from my last job. Do I even really have the right to be teaching this? Yeah. Those bad yeah. thoughts creep in and you're like, what the heck? This is so dumb. You're talking to people who need help and you have the heart and you want to help them. That's why you became a nurse in the first place. That's why we're still nurses now. And it's just about showing up and listening to people and meeting their need. Whenever I get psyched out about not being able to do something, I really try to redirect my thought to why is this important to me anyway? Because it's important to them. It's important yeah. to me because it's important to you, right? Yes. I'm helping nurses. I'm helping nurses. I'm, I'm helping hospices. It's like, why does that even matter? You have to revisit that identity of people are more important than me being embarrassed or me being wrong, I'll show up and be wrong. I'll be the wrongest. Okay. It does. I make huge it, mistakes all the time. It's the honest truth. I went to this Fenfluence table last night. I got invited to come in and it's a new community for me. But honestly, I got invited. I, was like, I got pulled into a thing. Long story short, I went to this crowd and those 30 women in this room and I am in their VIP mastermind, or I'm in their inner circle part of it, which I just said yes to three weeks ago. So again, you get vortexed into a circle, comes up. And it was crazy because I sat there and all these inspiring women were at this room talking about what they're doing and what they need help with. And the minute we learned to have fun, it just was like, bam. But the craziest part was they were going around and asking some women to share what they were doing, like a creatorship or what are you doing? What's inspiring this and that? And in my head, I'm like, oh, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I don't want to talk. I don't know why I did this. I don't know why, but I'm sitting there. And then that's why you're at the table. I came here to talk, but I yeah. had all these insecurities of just, oh, maybe what I'm doing is not inspiring. It's maybe not good enough. It's a, oh my yeah. God, like these people out here are like, I was comparing myself. It was impressive with what the, some of these women were doing. And then I'm like, here I am going, okay. Energetically, the lady with the mic comes up behind me. She goes, do you have something to share? And I'm like, do I have something to share? She goes, you don't have to. And then the coach was like, share. I was like, Okay, but like you have something to share. But it was insane what you were talking about. In that moment, my nerves kicked in. You can hear it in my voice because it was a brand new place. It was a brand new audience. No one understands what a nurse coach is. Here I am. I have to re-explain myself. Mm -hmm. Validate your position yeah. and your worth it's in front of right. all these successful people. Exactly. So talk about being a nurse coach was hilarious. I was just like, oh, my biggest success this past, which they just asked, they wanted to talk more of what I did three weeks ago. One of the big things that I'm grateful for right now is I did the super mom CEO event. Yes. It's for women that are entrepreneurs wanting to integrate motherhood into their business. How do you balance it? But then I said, you know what it was? It was about women having fun. 
Mm. It was about bringing back the inner childhood in us to having fun and then bringing that back into business. Cause I was like, we have fun. Money comes just like a yes. bedside, just like when you're a yes. CEO, just when it comes in. The minute we turn it into this obligation, people are like, oh my God, I'm the CEO right now of my own company. I got to work nine to five and this and that. And they're still constrained to this thing. And they get them to these calls, their sales calls, bam. And I, I go back in the schedule. Where are you having fun? Where's the fun in here? That's why I loved when you came on and you're like, hey, whatever I do is for fun. We don't know what we're talking yep. about. We're going to yep. go on stage don't, and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Say yes to all of it. And then if it's not a good fit, say, you know what? This isn't a good fit. You're allowed to. And yeah. the minute I realized that everyone's, oh my God, that's so awesome. Blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, oh. Yeah. I used to worry. I was like, okay, I should be wearing a suit. I'm an executive and people expect me to be wearing a suit. Too. I hate wearing suits. I want to wear leggings. If leggings aren't appropriate, then we're going to have to figure something else out. But I don't like wearing suits. Okay. I don't like looking executive. I don't like wearing blouses. It's not my jam. And my husband's Nina, no one cares about any of that. As soon as you open your mouth and start telling your story, you have the whole room. No one cares if you're wearing a suit because they want to connect with you and your story. When your story starts to come out in what you're sharing, no matter what it is, your hospice story, your nurse coach story, your story about what happened in that event, we're just supposed to be having fun and enjoying ourselves. And if my kid walks in and says, I have, have to poop, then we're having fun. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, son. Well, pooping Go on about with children. It, right? Pooping yeah. children is very right. important because otherwise right. our nights exactly. are very tough. And that's the only thing he has to say when I'm on Zoom right? There's nothing else to talk about. If I'm on Zoom or live call, there's no other topics available than poop or some type of body part. I used to be so uptight. I'm getting better. I'm, I'm a recovering stuffy person because I was so professional and I had this definition of what professional is and why people would take me seriously or not. And then when you start to listen to people and you start to listen to their story and you connect with them with your story, you validate yourself. And then oh when you God, t- the start telling stories. It's so funny how this word yeah. professionalism, I tell people, I'm like, what does that mean? Yesterday, when I was going to this table, they send an email, they go dress to impress. And I'm like, what does that mean? What are we talking about here? Are we talking about like any nominations, <laughs> like dress to impress? Are we yeah. talking about professional dress to impress? Are we talking about mommy dress to impress? Like I went in five different worlds. I came in with some sparkly shoes, some pants and a sparkly shirt. And I walked in and people are like, what was this? We like this outfit. I said, cause it's comfy. I'm lazy. And it still brightens up everyone's day. And that's how I yeah. roll. And even yep. now when my kids come in, my kids come into all my fucking shit. Yes. Yeah, all, all the calls. time. Nonstop. Nonstop. There's no, and everyone's, oh my God, I had a conversation with this gentleman and he called me, not a scheduled time. He called me and in between calls, I just happened to pick up my phone. I'm downstairs during summer school. Rohan does not have, there's no special needs summer school y'all, or there are, but it's like half day. It's a piece of shit. So I, Rohan is home and he's pretty chatty waddy, which we have loved because he wasn't talking two years ago. So now we're chatty waddy. This guy comes up and he goes, oh, is there something in the background? I said, that would be my child. My child's in the background. If you want to have a conversation, just keep talking. I told him, like, I have a hard stop at one because I have a client. And he goes, okay, I'm going to make this quick. I said, great. What do you need? This guy was like, you know what? It's very distracting, whatever's in the background. I said, then we don't need to have a conversation. He yeah, goes, comes the person in. to talk to because it's going to so be then, like this. So then I actually did just move to the hallway, sit up the stairs. I'm sitting on the staircase. I put it on speaker. My husband knew I was going to say something. My husband's in the comments. Oh, something's happening. He'll do this too, right? And then he's like, ma'am, you know what? It's very unprofessional if you get on business calls and your child is screaming in the background. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. First of all, my child in the background is a disabled child that you are just now discriminating against. And two, you called me without an appointment. And then he's, okay, fair. I said, my calls that are important are taken in my office and my children are notified not to bug me within the time frame. I put a timer on in my house, but I don't need to explain this to you. I said, thank you very much for reminding me what professionalism is not. 
And then he's, I don't think, I was like, I don't think this is going to go anywhere. And thank you very much. I probably won't answer your call ever again. Click. So. The end. <laughs> the end. Yeah. Like, I think people like, oh, it needs to be quiet. Zoom calls. Oh, coaching calls. People think, oh my God, you need to be present. Yeah, look at me. I'm standing. I have ADHD. So I'm standing. I'm moving around. I can be fully present with movement or I can be fully present when my house and my children are all fully chaotic. I just put my ears on just like how you have. And me and you can have a full blown conversation. Yeah. I think people need to let go of the stigma of professionalism. I Does agree. I think it's, it's, the it's hard to do when you're tied to that outcome. And something that I've really self-coached is letting go of being so tied to the outcome. Cause we're like, if I fail, if I don't do good, you're so tied to the outcome that you can't enjoy the journey and you can't even be present because you're so worried about what if it has to be perfect. And I really made everyone in my house miserable with that approach, trying to be someone who has it all together. And now it's, hey, I forgot we had a call right now. My kids are home. I don't have it together. I overbooked my calendar. I'm disorganized. This is We're what it is. Hot messes. I am a hot high messes. No way. functioning hot mess. Hot mess. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. I own it. Take you it know, or leave it. It's funny that you say that because when someone asked me, I've been working with Dome for a little over two and a half, three years now. A lot of people ask me, how did you get that position? How'd you get this role? How'd you get this contracting? You guys want to know the honest truth? I had COVID and this is the honest truth. I stayed this story very lovingly. And I had a meeting with her. I had COVID. It was, a Jan it was in January. I had three kids running around. I had a puppy. I was in a tank top and I had no voice. And I was sitting on the sofa and I took her a call. Because I wasn't attached to the outcome. I didn't realize that she was the director either. Like, <laughs> let me just throw that out there. But I sat there without the intentions of, okay, who comes in? The only thing I stated, because she asked, how come you came on the call? Do you need to reschedule? And I told her, no, because this is my life and this is how it is. And I am committed to being on a call. However, I show up is how I show up. I'm going to be there. I can't physically be there because we had COVID during the time. And at least that was the best part about Zoom. After 15 minutes, she's like, where have you been? Our company needs you. You're hired. Awesome. So when I got fired and I had no income, I started applying for jobs. I'm desperate because I'm so tied to this outcome. But I wasn't tied to the outcome of consulting because I was focused on what to do about my job. I get a call from one of the positions I applied for. It's a doctor. And he said, you applied for my regional quality hospice position. Call him to tell you I filled it with a friend. She's going to do it remotely. I'm like, thanks for letting me know. You don't always know what, right. what's going to happen with something you applied for. Thanks so much for letting me know. I got a question for you. Why are you looking for a job? You've only worked for this hospice in this role for a month, two months. What's going on? I already know I'm not getting his job. So I right. am not tied to the outcome of impressing him. I said, they fired me and I don't know why. He said, yeah, me too. I started that hospice, grew it to what it is today. And they fired me for no reason. He said, so I was looking at your resume and it looks like you have done a lot with accreditation and compliance and I'm wanting to get accredited. And what would you think about if I matched what they paid you and you could stay at home and just audit my charts remotely and help me get accredited and you could work whatever hours you want. And you could just help me for as long as it takes as many hours as you need. And is that something that would interest you at all? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that would interest me a lot. <laughs> Thanks. So I worked for him. That was my first contract ever. It was $188,000 for that year. I worked for him in my leggings from my home while my kids were at school. Only those hours. I went on site, met their team, did a mock survey, built my own stuff for my business during that time, built my audit sheets, built how I wanted to connect with clients, started doing the passive income stuff because I had wiggle room in my life. Now I had margin that I never had before. Walked down to the beach with my husband, was able to pick up my kids and show up in my kids' lives again without the pressure of having to worry about everything else, without the pressure of showing up and being afraid to be who I was. And it just all went away. And that was four years ago. He's still my client today. And 
that was how it all started because I wasn't tied to the outcome anymore. It I had to let it go. Do you see? And I hope people hear this. That is how it started. I worked with Dome. Then I got NVIDIA. Then I got Dorte. Then I got someone else. Then I got here. And people are like, how? I said, because I don't think I would have gotten this Dome position if I was there with a button up tie and a thing up and all looking up. Sash. And like, no, I straight up was on my sofa and I was like, it's just a conversation. I always tell people this. It starts with the conversation. Speak your truth. You spoke your truth because you're just like, not coming here anyways. The power. I got nothing to sell you. People recognize <laughs> that. It's the biggest thing with entrepreneurs. When I go into certain situations, I don't sell. I listen. I hear what they need. I tell them my story and when they ask me and I'm relatable. And then all yep. of a sudden they're like, and then I fill the gap, right? Obviously I have a gap that I fill. And I'm like, could you imagine if I can help your employers feel heard, valued, and understood, and your retention went up? So you don't have to put people on disability. You don't have to do certain things, mm -hmm. right? And they feel valued at home with the struggles that they're feeling. And now they're showing up to work 10 times more. That's 10 times more profit into the company pipelines. Mm -hmm. This opens up the possibilities. And that's what you did with that gentleman is you opened up the possibility or he opened up for you. Yeah. He, he just opened up the world of possibility of, hey, how would it look like for you for doing X, Y, and Z? Yeah. I was in a really low place. And in my mind, part of me was like, I shouldn't be doing this. This is a terrible time to do this because I need a regular income right now. I need a job. I need a regular paycheck right now. I, I need more money right now. I, I don't need less. I need insurance right now. There's a million reasons to say no to everything. And you right. can think of as many as you need to make yourself feel better and for your brain to protect you from the unknown. But when we start saying yes, things start to happen. Things start to make sense. Things start to move forward. I had a situation literally this week that did not go the way I hoped. I had trained a contractor for two months, spent two hours doing orientation, showing her how to do the audits. I'm like, thank goodness I don't have to do this client myself because all my other contractors are booked. I need this girl. She's so knowledgeable. She's so great. She's got such good reach. She's going to be perfect for my client. She calls me back right after the training. She's like, Nina, I'm so sorry. I, I can't do this. I'm not going to do it. I think there's an, a conflict in my contract. I went back and checked and I just feel uncomfortable. And I almost was really upset. And I was like, you know what? We're going to let this go. Thanks so much for telling me and being forward with me and not just leaving me high and dry when you're supposed to show up. Because so, I'd rather you call me and tell me you're not doing it than my charts don't get audited and I find out my client didn't get their deliverables. So I'm like, thanks so much for just being up front with me. And I thought about what it must feel like to be her on the other line of that phone. And I said, that must be so disappointing for you. And I'm so sorry that you don't feel comfortable with it. And I would never want you to feel like you were doing something you weren't supposed to be doing. And I put myself in her shoes instead of feeling my feelings. I felt her feelings. And then she said something really interesting. I said, at the end of the call, you let me know how I can support you going forward after right. this. And she, and she said, okay. Literally 15 minutes after we hung up, she said, I thought about it and I'm going to refer you to all my franchisees at all my hospices and, and I'm going to set up a contract for you to be their compliance support. They can all have a compliance support. I'm going to set you up with all of them. I can't do anything for you except for this. And I was like, that's way better than me paying you. She just turned into a referral source. She was a contractor. Yeah. I was about to pay her for 10 hours a month. That's nothing. 10 hours a month at $100 an hour. Yeah. She is referring me to potentially ten to $50,000, right? $100,000. Who, who knows what their needs are? But I didn't go in feeling how I wanted to feel. I went in feeling how she felt and how I should respond in that minute and what could happen. For some reason, there's a reason. I don't know what it is and I'm not happy about it. But for whatever reason, this is happening and I can choose to embrace that and feel it and allow it and let it go. Or I can get all upset about it and be like, what am I going to do now? I'm 10 hours short a month and now I'm going to have to pick up those hours. I didn't let the spiral happen. I stopped the spiral. I was so proud of myself. I went and told my husband, I was like, you're not going to believe this. 
I let it go. I was not tied to the outcome and the outcome got better. I came out better than I went in. You're a human being. I think what goes back to just realizing everyone has choices. (laughs) And when we have our choices, we are not sitting there playing the victim card. The defensive card, you should have done this. You should have done that prior. Why didn't you check before when I interviewed you about this? Why didn't you know already? Yeah. Versus now it's just, it's okay, okay, Amy. You know what? This will hurt. We're good. Yeah. I hear you. And I feel you. I appreciate you. And moving forward, if there's anything I can do, just let me know. Yep. And I generally mean that when I say that. I do too. I did mean it. I did mean it. Obviously she wanted those extra hours and needed those extra hours. And now she's finding out she can't do it and she's bummed. So what can I do to help you? When you really care about people, instead of taking advantage of you or letting you down, they come back and say, you know what, actually, I'd like to support you. You want to support me? Fine. I want to support you too. <laughs> yeah. That's why <what> like, <coughs> when people talk about referrals, and this is one of the last topics we do because I want to make sure everyone's on time, is that people think that referrals, like it's something you have to go find. Sometimes I remind people, referrals are the ones that come to you. Yeah. Sometimes those are the best ones. When people come to you, I've had so many referrals that came to me and ended up being a beautiful collaboration, just like how this one was. I'm not sure what this is, where this is going, but it's going to be something great. I have so many nurses who ask me, how can I be a consultant without a website? I don't have a website. I'm like, look, I'm going to tell you the number of clients I've gotten from my website. Get a pen. You can write it down. Yep. They got one. Client. Never, never one. Never I only one. do it. My website is only for information. Based. It's for validation. It's yeah. valid. It, it, if you want to look up heart healthcare solutions, there it is. It's validation, right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I get referrals for clients by word of mouth through partnerships with other organizations and through providing value. That is it. Yeah. That is all. And that's all people need to know. When you start a business, you only need two things. You need yourself, you need a voice, and you need a passion. Yep. Everything else can, you can figure out. You, know, you got people to support you. The why is more important than the how. Yes. The how happens when you have the why. Yes. I'm happy you said that because not very many people say that. So thank you. I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate that all the time. It's something I learn over and over again. Every day I wake up and I'm like, how am I going to face today? And then I'm like, no. Today's going to face itself. I'm here for this purpose. Right. And you got to do I'm the here work. to show up. And right. I'm here and to I show up and do people, the work. And I tell people, you yeah. the, the showing up is not just having, like you said, 20 tabs open and just staring at the screen. <laughs> That's not hey, showing up. Get on LinkedIn. Come in. Yeah. Message these people. Say hi. Say hello. Do about 20, 30 connections and then walk away from your computer. If you feel like selling is gross, offer to serve. I would love Absolutely. to learn more about what you're doing and if I could help you. If there's anything you need from me, I'll help you do it. Service is the best thing. When you come out there, service is where it's at. Is there anything I can do? Can I support you in any way? How can I help with your employee retentions? How can I help you? Do you feel validated as an HR director? Do you need service? Can I, do you want to vent to me? I'm here for you. It's all about service. Things. Lena, me and you can talk forever on those things. Yes. Forever. (laughs) You're like my, I was like, man, we have more in common than we think. We like, have a ton. We need to have more yeah. conversations. <laughs> for sure. Let's do it. I'm here for it. Hey guys, if you want to get a hold of her, if you want to learn more about consulting in the hospice world or in consulting in general, she does have a beautiful, fantastic program. We'll make sure it's all in the links. It's really her in the DMs. Just like I say, it's really me in the DMs. And anyone have any other questions, please reach out to us. We'll make sure they're answered. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I'm energized. I'm about to get off here and just go kill it after I eat something. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, guys, this will all be on YouTube. Subscribe below and we will see you next week. Have a good one. 